Our next guest is the newest assistant of the Maryland baseball program, Brock Keener. Brock, thank you for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Excited to be here. Uh, so we are recording this on October 24th. So Brock has only been with the program now for about two weeks and uh, very unusual circumstances and timing with when you joined the program. I know you told me that you thought the coaching carousel was over, um, but then there's an opening at Maryland. Kind of run us through how you found out that Maryland had an opening. And then when did you think that it would be a possibility that you could come be a turf? So I found out about the same time everybody else did when Kendall Rogers posted about it, right? That, that man is uh, in the weeds of, of everything college baseball. So uh, it kind of caught me off guard because, like I mentioned, I thought that the coaching carousel had come to a halt for the, the year. But saw the opening, I thought, okay, this would be a potential exciting opportunity. And then I had a, a couple people reach out to me to see if I was interested. And after saying yes a couple of times, the next phone call came from Coach Swope and that's when it really started to get the ball rolling in my brain, like, okay, this could be a real possibility, and had a couple of conversations from there, and, and now we're here. You know, you spent the last three seasons at Georgetown, kind of from the outside looking in, especially from a local team. What was the opinion and view of Maryland baseball before you joined the program? A uh, really good baseball team, very competitive, relentless ball club, and, and that dates back to not just Georgetown, but my playing days at Michigan. Uh, coming here in 2017, them coming to our park in 2018. And then when I was at Army West Point, we played Maryland in a fall game, right? So I've been tied to the Terps as a, an opponent for a long time now. And you always knew it was going to be a hard ball game. Uh, you needed to take care of the baseball because if you give them any free outs, they're going to capitalize on it. Maryland made hitting has been a thing for a long time, right? And uh, so overall, that's been the, the overall nature, in my opinion, of Maryland baseball is that you got a highly competitive ball club that – you're going to have to play extremely well against if you want to beat them. So for the past six or seven years, you've kind of been on the outside looking in at Maryland baseball. Now for the past couple of weeks, you've been on the inside. What's something that surprised you that you couldn't have figured out when you were uh, you know, on the outside looking in? You know, what surprised me is almost how loose in nature all the guys are. Because like I mentioned, in, uh, in competition when you're the opponent, it, it seems like it's all business, high intensity. Uh, but to see the, the personality, not only of the players, but the coaching staff and to realize, OK, that that's a big factor into why there is success, not only on the field, but in terms of the day to day and the player development, all that. You can tell that the relationships are are real and they're genuine. And it's not just one speed all the time, but more just picking and choosing and growing together. So that's been uh, the most intriguing and, and the most exciting part for me so far. You work with a coach who obviously his expertise is in hitting. Um, that's something Matt swope has been known about for for a while. I'm interested to know a relationship between you and him when you come in. Is it more you're learning his ideas and then executing them in your vision? Or are you guys kind of uh, working in uh, almost like, here's what I've learned and I want to bring this here. Like, how does that work uh, with the relationship between you two? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And uh, I don't think that there's one answer for this. And again, I've only been here two weeks, so we're still figuring it out. But one thing that really excited me, so Coach Swope, obviously, he does things a little bit differently, especially with the whole motor preferences and, and how – he implements that within the individual player development. That's new to me. So learning that and understanding how that's implemented um, within a day-to-day -day and how that's implemented come game time has been new and, and been exciting. But on the, the flip side of that, what I realized in, in the interview process, which really excited me, is at the end of the day, he's still a baseball guy and baseball is still baseball in the sense of you need to make good swing decisions. You need to be on time to hit the baseball. And we're ultimately just trying to score runs. Right. And how we can go about that, we can do that in a multitude of ways. And that's my background. That, that's what my forte was at Georgetown as the hitting coach was finding ways to generate offense and uh, overall just maximize what we have. So learning how Coach Swope goes about it, as well as combining, OK, hey, Maybe this is how you guys do it. Have you thought about it this way? And overall, just trying to work together and grow. It's, it's been fun. How much about motor preferences did you know before coming to Maryland? And then what, I guess, has surprised you the most about their usage of motor preferences here? Um, so I knew what motor preferences were. If I was in a, in a conversation, you said the word motor preferences, I could go, I know that that exists. And that was about it. Um, and what's been cool about it is learning that it 
it, it is a lot, but it's also you're learning it because it's it's so individualized for each person. Essentially, all you're trying to do is figure out how the athlete moves and then, OK, let's do that more often than not. and Let's be really efficient and clean with that. So that's what's exciting. As somebody who didn't know what all goes into it, the only worry for me is that, OK, we're trying to conform athletes to fit into one mold, but rather what I've learned is it's the exact opposite. It's more like we're just trying to learn the athlete and say, okay, hey, this is what naturally you do well already. Let's just do that great now. Um, and, and that's what's been really cool. I want to take it back to your personal baseball career. You grew up in Texas. You go to Michigan. You spend two seasons there. What went into the decision to become a, a student uh, assistant coach? Uh, so when I transferred from junior college to Michigan, uh, there was a, a little fight for a couple of years with the academic department trying to get my junior college credit, credits to transfer. Um, and ultimately, they transferred, but as blank credits, so not towards any major specifically. So I knew I was going to be doing a victory lap regardless. Um, and it was at the end of my uh, my senior year, I was in Ann Arbor for the summer, and I was talking to one of my best buds, uh, Michael Verdar, actually. And he goes, well, why don't you ask Coach Backage if you can stick around for a year and just learn this side of baseball, if that's something that you're interested in. I was like, that, that sounds like a good idea. And I asked Coach Backage, and he was all for it, and he was awesome about it. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to set up the field and do what I could, but he just let me sit in on the meetings. And I've tried to find a good way to say this because I've said this to some other people, and I, I don't think I've been able to, but... Uh, it was great for me because I got to be the sausage as the player, but then I got to see how the sausage was made for a year, right? And that's where I really found the, the new love for the game. Like uh, just finding players that have way more athletic ability than me, way more baseball intuition, but finding ways to help maximize their potential and get them onto the next level, that, that was truly awesome to be a part of for that year and just kind of took it from there. So I'm very grateful that Michigan didn't accept my junior college credits. How have you, um, you've worked with some some good players. I mean, um, uh, blanking on his, uh, the, the start, the lefty starter for Michigan, Tommy. Um, Tommy I'm Henry. To, Tommy Henry. You know, Michigan had some good, good players in that run. Obviously, Georgetown as well. Um, who's somebody on Maryland's team that you're really looking forward to working with this upcoming year? You know, uh, Hollis Porter. From, he, he reminds me of myself some in the sense of he, he went to a Division One school out of high school, then bet on himself and went to a junior college because he knew he wanted a different opportunity. That, that's my story to a T. And just being around him for the last couple of weeks, just his desire and, and passion to be great, and it, it's outstanding. Um, and he just loves the game of baseball. And we're both new together, right? I'm picking his brain just because he's been here two weeks longer than me. Uh, but we, we both have a similar background from that regard, and, and we're learning this together. But at the end of the day, it's still baseball. And to see his compete and his desire to be great, not only for himself, but he, he's all about the turf. So somebody from Mississippi picking his brain. And first thing he told me, he's like, Coach, I love it here. Like, I, I didn't think. I was really worried, but I love it here. I love what we do. I love how we do it. And it, it's just awesome to be around him, and as well as, as abundance of guys. But that's probably Hollis Porter excited i wanted to ask about the new practice facility being hit um being built right now um kind of what is the excitement in the program for when that is completed i believe it should be done by the start of the season and then just how is that just going to advance and just make everything so much more better in the player development realm for you guys it's just it's going to be so awesome because there's already so much development taking place and maximizing the resources we have currently right and it's obviously working uh, over not just the last couple of weeks, but over the last decade, right? So now to just have more resources for the for the players because they, they have a desire, like I mentioned about Hollis, they, they all, all want to be great. They all have outstanding work ethics and are very disciplined to be focused on what they need to be working on, uh, which has been very apparent since I've joined here a couple of weeks ago. So now having a place that they can call their own for – go in at any hour of the day, any hour of the night, and just have really specialized training to what they need as the individual athlete, I, man, the sky's the limit. It, it's going to be great. You know, you mentioned how the the year at Michigan kind of jump-started your, your coaching career. What's the what's the long-term outlook for you? We're sitting here, obviously, in 2024, and you've just joined the Maryland staff. Um, would you like to be a head coach someday? What's kind of on your mind uh, looking way, way in the future? 
Yeah, I mean, I think being a head coach one day would be cool, but but right now I'm really just trying to dominate with the Terps. Like that's, I, I try and be really good about being where my feet are, and I'm blessed to be here. This is an amazing opportunity that that Coach Swope has provided me, and I think that I'm a big believer in as long as I take care of business in the moment and just really embrace where I'm at and what I'm doing and being fully engaged with the people I'm around, the future's going to take care of itself. Like I, I never would have imagined back in 20. 17 when I came here as a player sitting in the bullpen all week and warming up the pitchers that I'd be here as a coach one day right I just knew that I wanted to be in baseball and every year just tried to work to stay in baseball so I don't know what the future holds uh, if I'm a head coach and assistant for life whatever the case may be I just know that I want to win at a very high level and that being here in Maryland allows that and that's what's really exciting and we'll see where it goes from here we'll see where it goes from here and couple more months till the baseball season starts in February. Um, Coach Brock, really appreciate you for joining us this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate y'all. You have a good one.